I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims to heaven for our weekly Bible study in English language. This is the second Sabbath school lesson study. God is so gracious to each one of us. So he has given each one of us the privilege to study his word, the second lesson study. The title of our second lesson study in this quarter is God's mission to us, part two. God's mission to us, part two. Before I start this lesson study, I want to share that prayer request. Please pray for me this weekend. By Friday morning, I'm going to be in Hyderabad city. I'm going to preach in Kukadpalli, our church, Friday evening. And Saturday, that is the Sabbath day, I'm going to preach in our church, English Central Church, Hyderabad, which is located in Abbots, our campus where we have our union office and our school also. I'm going to preach God's word there. And they're also celebrating Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. I'm going to participate in that also. If you are anywhere in these places near to that, please come and I can meet you. Let's pray before we begin the lesson study. Loving Father, we want to thank you for your son Jesus and his supreme sacrifice for each one of us. Lord, we want to also thank you for the provision of salvation which you have made for each one of us. Bless each one of us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us the heavenly wisdom so that we can understand the deeper implications of this lesson study. Bless each person who is sharing this message with others and also sharing this link with others and also sharing these thoughts with others also. Bless them abundantly. Thank you, Jesus, for this humble ministry. Use us mightily for your glory and honor because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is the second part of the lesson, God's mission to us. The memory text is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. A very, very familiar passage to each one of us. We have learned already in the first lesson that God is the source of the mission. It is God who started the mission when he created the planet Earth, when he created the human race. That is the starting point of the mission. But what is the driving force of the mission to us, God's mission to us? It's because of his abundant agape love his abundant love and also his abundant grace because of that we have the salvation god is giving his mission to us it is god's intention that to restore human race from the fallen condition because of sin the human race has lost the image of God and the likeness of God. That's why it is God's purpose voluntarily which he started to redeem each one of us. That's why this message of his salvation is given to us. Mission to us is his salvation message graciously given to each one of us. We read in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, by beholding him, we become like him. When he comes, he is going to be like us. We are going to see him as we are, which means it's because of his agape love, he took that bold step, the important step to become a human being. This is what we call incarnation. After the second coming, we will be changed into immortal body. But Jesus himself will retain the five scars on his body. He is going to be looking like us, the human beings. That's why what an amazing sacrifice, what an amazing account of his salvation to us. God is reaching out to each one of us intentionally it is not accidentally intentionally providentially he is reaching out to each one of us after the second coming after the millennium of a thousand years 
God will create new heaven and the new earth. So God is going to create everything new. That's why knowing Christ is important for our salvation. But that is not enough. We have to share this good news of salvation with the people around. Because someone with a burden share this gospel with your parents, maybe grandparents or with you personally. Because of that, you are into this salvation light, the light of God's gospel. You have to share this light with others. In the salvation process, in this great work of salvation, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are actively involved. We call this one triune God or Trinity we use the word. Though that word Trinity is not found in the Bible, but that one word explains that there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We read in John chapter 14 verse 6. We read in John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So Jesus is the way to salvation. Jesus is the way to our eternal life. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 10 verses 5 to 9, Jesus said that I am the door. Nobody can come to heaven. Nobody can come to the Father except through the door. That is through Jesus. So Jesus is the way to reach heaven, to obtain eternal life. But Jesus said while he was on this earth, John chapter 4, verse 34, we read. John chapter 4, verse 34, we read. My work, that is the work of Jesus. My work is to do the will of the Father who sent me. Yes, God has sent his Son. This is what we read in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world and he sent his only Son. So whosoever believes in him should not perish but have the everlasting life. So we can notice three distinct individuals. God the Father, God the Son. It is for our human understanding. They are using this term God the Father, God the Son. There are some people who are confused by saying if there is God the Son, there should be Mother also. That is wrong. In order to explain the relationship, the human relationship between father and son, good father and good son, this term is used for each one of us as a metaphor. Like Jesus is our good shepherd or Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. Yes, we understand these earthly expressions so that we can understand clearly the intention of God, the message of God. We read in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let us create man in our own image, in our image and after our likeness. And also we read in Genesis chapter 11 verse 7, when they began to build the Tower of Babel, again God said, let us go down so that plural word, let us, showing more than one person. God the Father, God the Son. But there is also God the Holy Spirit. We read about him in several places. Let us look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, you be here in Jerusalem. You wait for the Holy Spirit. You will be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then you go to witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the world. So all three are actively involved. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are actively involved in the work of salvation. But there are no contradictions in God. They are united as one. Often many people think God the Father, 
is in the Old Testament. The same God in the New Testament is revealed as God the Son. Some people feel that the same God after the ascension of Jesus is with us in the form of Holy Spirit. That is not right. Because our memory text, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, which says, Go into the world and preach and teach. And those who believe in him, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's why three persons are distinctly mentioned in several places in the Bible. That's why there is God the Father, a person. God the Son, another person. God the Holy Spirit, another person. All three are united for our salvation. There are no contradictions in God. But all three are actively involved and working for our salvation to restore us back to the original state from which Adam and Eve have fallen. When we are restored, this is what we call reconcile. We will remain as faithful people of God, holy and righteous throughout the eternity. There is a task given to each one of us. That is the privilege given to each one of us. That is, we have to make people as the disciples of God. That's why the mission, the work of the mission is to focus on preparing people, training people to be the disciples of Jesus, male as well as female. That's why God's mission to us is to train people for God's glory and honor. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. We also know that what are the attributes of discipleship? Each disciple, what should we contain? What should be our characteristics? Definitely, in order to exhibit the qualities of God in us, we have to accept Jesus as our personal Savior. That is the first step. The second step is to follow his teachings, which are recorded in the Bible. That's why we are told Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and light to my path. Definitely God's word we have to follow and God's commandments because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's why what is expected from each disciple, who are the disciples? Not only those 12 disciples whom God has chosen and trained. One was lost, Judas is created, but 11 disciples left and it was chosen. Matthias was chosen as the 12th disciple. But this is not only applying to those 12 disciples whom we call apostles. This is applying to each believer. Each believer, male or female, are the disciples of Jesus. That's why Jesus told us in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, Go into the world, preach and to teach and make them my disciples. That's why when we teach and preach about Jesus, his word, people will accept. When we plant the seeds, the seeds of the gospel will never die. The word of God is like the seed. When we plant it, it will not go waste. One day, though it may take several months and several years, that person will come to know the true God. That person will convert. It took King Nebuchadnezzar around 35 years to accept the God of the Bible as his personal savior. Yes, the word of God will never die. It works in the hearts and the minds of the people. That's why we have to share the word of God. Jesus also said, we have to go 
to every part of the world. We cannot neglect any area of the world. It's true. All of us cannot go to every part of the world. At least in that village, in that town, in that city where you live, around you, you can be a witness. As I have mentioned in the last lesson, Jesus said to go and preach. If they believe and if they request for baptism, we have to arrange for baptism. But our duty is to witness for Jesus, to share the gospel in whichever way you are capable of without giving any lame excuse. As I said last time also in the first lesson, when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach and teach and those who believe in him, baptize them. That is the 11th commandment as I consider. Yes, God wrote 10 commandments and gave us, but the 11th commandment is we have to share this gospel. So this is not any request saying, please, can you do it? God is not pleading with us. He gave us the command as his followers. We have to obey it. We have to do it. And also this gospel is everlasting gospel. We read in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, everlasting gospel. What is everlasting gospel? That is the same gospel in the Old Testament times, in the time of Jesus, in the time of apostles, in this ending of the end time, the same gospel. What is that gospel? In Jesus Christ, salvation is free to all the people. We have to accept it by faith. So salvation is free in Jesus Christ because of his death and resurrection and because of his grace and because of his love. Salvation is free. But you have to receive it by your faith, accepting him as your personal savior. This is open for all. That when simple nutshell suit, in simple nutshell, that salvation is in Jesus Christ is freely available to everyone who wants to be saved. That's why this is called as everlasting gospel. This is the plan of God. It is the purpose of God to reach with this mission to every place in the world. After that, the end will come, the second coming of Jesus. So the first requirement is this gospel should be presented as a testimony to every place in the world. Thank God we are living in this ending of the end time. Technology is so much abundantly available to each one of us, including our mobile phone. Gospel can be preached. Gospel can be taken to every nook and corner of this world through the latest technology what we use as common people. This technology through your mobile phone, through your Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever the mass media you are trying to use. This is not available to the previous generations. Only it is available to each one of us in this ending of the end time. So let us utilize it for the glory of God. At present, this technology, whether it is YouTube, Facebook, and any other method of uh, social media, that is free. But yesterday, there was a, a shocking news on the news network, which says from next year, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, they are considering to collect fees from each person who is using it, which means in a short while from now, this is not going to be free. We have to pay for it. When it is free, some of us did not make use of it. Then after that, we may have the lame excuse and say, oh, it is so expensive, I don't have money. Now it is free. We did not make use of that much. But 
Are you using the latest technology for the glory of God? Whatever the Holy Spirit inspires you, you can share that message on your WhatsApp, on your Facebook, on your YouTube, whatever the way you can. If you think that I don't know how to handle the technology, at least many people are taking their time with a burden to make messages in the form of videos. We are trying to do that also every week through this lesson study. Then you can share it. You can share that link with others so that somebody may be blessed. And one day when we go to heaven, the Lord will say to you, it's because you have shared this link with so and so. That person is saved and that person is here. Meet this person. How rejoicing it's going to be. It's not costing anything. Just only share that link on your WhatsApp or on your Facebook. But by watching that video, by watching that message, some people will have eternal life. That's why my brothers and sisters, let us not neglect to God's work. Let us not neglect to do God's work. Let us not neglect to witness for God. Let us not find any lame excuse by saying, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a theologian. I don't have courage to stand in front of the people. I don't know how to handle the technology to share this message. Let us not give such lame excuses. Ask the Lord. It is nothing is impossible to God. God used illiterate fishermen, the disciples. When Peter preached, 3,000 people were converted. Can you imagine a humble, illiterate fisherman from Bethsaida? And whenever the disciples went to any part of the world, what did they say in those days? The men who are turning the world upside down are come here. The men who are turning the world upside down. They didn't have any technology. They did not have any good education. But God used them. That's why God is giving us, God is giving us the privilege to do God's work. God is using human beings as his channel to take the mission to others. All of us know God used from the beginning only human beings to propagate this message, to proclaim his message. God used Noah. Afterwards, God used Abraham. God used Isaac. God used Jacob. God used Moses. God used prophets. God used apostles. Yes. God is using human beings. God can use angels by sending them to preach in every village, every town and every city. God can do that. But God is giving us this privilege to share this wonderful message as a testimony. If we neglect it, if we are reluctant to do this mission, what did Jesus say? He can eat. He can use even the stones to shout for him, to witness for him. Nothing is impossible to God. God can use anyone, any person, even the stones. Yes, but God is giving us the privilege. But if we fail it, God can use someone. If you are reluctant, God will choose someone. God will call someone to do it. That's why. What we are expected to do is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people humble themselves and repent and turn to me, then I will listen to their prayer. I will answer them. Surely, if we ask anything for his glory, God will surely answer it. God will surely give you that ability to witness for Jesus. That's why Jesus told before he ascended to heaven that all the followers of Jesus must go to take this mission to others, to share this gospel with others. Each one of us know we the human beings, we require oxygen. Without oxygen, we die. Without oxygen, Every living being will die. 
we need oxygen every moment likewise the church in order for the church to grow in order for the church to exist what is needed that is god's mission god's mission god's mission this is what sometimes we call evangelism that evangelism or god's mission is like oxygen for the church to survive if you don't have it if you don't do it what's going to happen if you don't ever if we don't do evangelism if we don't do that mission in each church then what's going to happen no new members will join because we are not doing that mission we are not doing that evangelism then what is going to happen as the days go by those old people will sleep in the lord then church will die because no more new members added that's why each member in each local church must do this evangelism take this mission to others so that others can be saved others will have the eternal life others also can come and join us this is what is required that's why my brothers and sisters yes god's mission to us god is opening different channels through which the message is proclaimed whichever way you can cooperate with god you can do it god can finish the gospel with you and with your cooperation suppose if you don't cooperate if you don't want to participate and if you just say i'll go to the church i will attend the church faithfully regularly i'll give my tithe and offering that's enough for me which means we are not collaborators with god so if you don't cooperate then still god will finish his work without you if you are cooperating with you god will finish the work in that area if you don't cooperate if you don't collaborate with god if you don't want to be collaborators with god still god will finish his work without you that's why my brother my sister what a privilege we have in this ending of the end time to be his co-laborers to do something to share the gospel with others so that they can be saved eternally one day if they perish god will ask you each one of us and say if you had witness to this person if you had witness to that person they would have been saved that's why we need to take time at least some time to witness this wonderful truth what you have you may not know all the truth nobody knows all the truth whatever little you think you know that will be too much for the others people that little truth what you can share will be so much truth for that other heathen person to come into the salvation fold that's why don't hesitate any time my brother my sister but give glory to him because this message is for all then who must be reached with the gospel in this world who should be reached who are eligible for receiving the salvation message and this is for every person in the world male as well as female educated educated or uneducated rich or poor every person needs salvation and they are looking for savior they are looking for the salvation that's why who is eligible every sinner on this earth is eligible candidate for salvation that's why it is our priority it is our privilege to share this good news of salvation which is free in jesus with all the people in the world and we are told in the first angel's message revelation chapter 14 verse 6 that this everlasting gospel must go to every caste 
if you want to say that way in Indian way. Every tribe, every language group in every part of the world, which includes islands, mountains, forests, those tribal areas, we have to take the gospel to all of those places. It's true, each one of us may not be able to reach out into that remote sky. My brothers and sisters, if it is your desire to share this good news with others, this is what we call witnessing. God will bless you. God will help you. Before I pray and end this second lesson, I want to appeal to each one of you to pray for me this weekend, Friday and Saturday, I am going to be in the city of Hyderabad. I am going to share God's word in our church in Kukarpalli Friday evening. Then Saturday afternoon, Sabbath afternoon, during the divine service, I am going to share the word of God in our English Central Church in Abbots. This is in the campus of our school as well as our union office. Most of you know it. Please pray for me. And I'm going to I'm going to return to Pune. I will start again on Sunday afternoon to return to Pune Spicer Adventist University. And this coming Sunday on October 15th, my mother is going to celebrate 87th birthday. Please pray for her. By God's grace, she is doing well. She is able to do everything for herself without depending much on others. We praise God. Continue to pray for her and pray for my journey and pray for the preaching. Let us conclude this lesson study with a word of prayer. Loving Father, we want to thank you Thank you for your abundant love and your goodness to each one of us. Help each one of us to share this gospel with others, to witness about Jesus, so that some people can be blessed and be saved eternally. Give us that zeal, give us that burden to do what you told us to do. Thank you, Jesus, for this privilege. And bless us and guide us, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen.